And the second thing is, we got to get you into World War One. We got to get you more into World War One because I think that's a rabbit hole. Which I know you're a Dan Carlin fan, mm-hmm. so Blueprint for Armageddon, yeah, it's gu- good, guaranteed. But but there's it, fewer evil people there. Yes, but well, but th- that's what actually there's a banality of that evil mm-hmm. of the Kaiser and of the uh, Austro-Hungarians and of see, I like World War One more. Because it was unresolved. It's one of those periods I was talking to you about, about like sometimes you're called and you fail. Like that's what happened. I mean, 50 million people were killed in the most horrific way. Like people literally drowned in the mud, like like an entire generation. Uh, One stat I love is that, you know, Britain didn't need a draft till 1916. Like they went two years of throwing people into barbed wire voluntarily. Yeah. And- because people love their country and they love the king and they thought they were going against the Kaiser. It's just like that conflict to me, I just can't read enough about it. Also just like births, Russian revolution, you know. Yeah, I mean. Hitler. You like, can't talk about like, World War II without World War I. Right. right. And I'm obsessed with the conflict. I've read way too many books about it. For this reason is it's unresolved. And like the, the roots of so much of even our current problems are happened in Versailles, right? Like Vietnam is because of the Treaty of Versailles. Um, many ways, the Middle Eastern problems and the division of the states there, the uh, Treaty of Versailles in terms of the penalties against Germany, but also the uh, fallout from those wars on the French and the German population, or the French and the British populations and their reluctance for war in 1939 or 1938 when, when Neville Chamberlain goes, right? Like that's one of the things people don't understand is the actual appetite of the British public mm-hmm. at that time. They didn't want to go to war. Only Churchill. He was the only one in the you know, in the gathering storm, right? Like being like, hey, this is really bad and all of that. And then even in the United States, our streak of isolationism, which swept, I mean, things were, because of that conflict, we were convinced as a country that we wanted nothing to do with Europe and its problems. And in many ways that contributed to the proliferation of Hitler and more. So like, I'm obsessed with World War One for this reason, which is that it's just like the root, it's like the culmination of the monarchies then the fall, mm-hmm. and then just all the shit spills out so, from there for like a hundred years. So World War One yeah. is like the most important shift in human history. Versus I would, like I would World War Two is like a consequence of that. Yeah, it's it's so I have a degree in security studies from Georgetown, and one of the thing is that we would focus a lot on that is like war, and but also like the complexity around war. And it's funny we never spent that much time on World War Two because hmm. it was actually quite of a clean war. It's a very atypical war, as in the war object, which we learned from World War I, is we must inflict suffering on the German people and invade the borders of Germany and destroy Hitler. Like the center of gravity is the Nazi regime and Hitler. So it had a very basic begin and end. Begin, liberate France, invade Germany, destroy Hitler, reoccupy, rebuild. World War I, what are you fighting for? Like- (laughs) Are you, I mean, and nobody even knew. You, you can yeah. go, the German general staff, they were like, even in 1917, they're like, the war was worth it because now we have Luxembourg. I'm like, really? Like you killed 2 million of your citizens for fucking Luxembourg and like half of Belgium, which is now like a pond. Yeah. And same thing, the French are like, well, we're, well, the French more so, they're defending their borders. But like, what are the British fighting for? Why did hundreds of thousands of British people die? In order to preserve the balance of power in Europe and prevent the Kaiser from having a port on the English Channel, like really, that's why these. That's more what wars are. Is they become these like yeah. atypical set. Uh, they, they become these protracted conflicts with a necessary diplomatic re- resolution. It's not clean. Mm-hmm. It's very dirty. It usually leads in the outbreak of another war and another war and another war and a slow burn of ethnic conflict, which bubbles up. So that's why I look at that one. Even because it's it's more typical of warfare in yeah, terms of the, how it works. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of interesting. You're making me realize yeah. uh, that uh, World War II is one of the rare wars where you can make a strong case for it's a fight of good versus yeah, evil. Just war theory, obviously. Like, yeah, they're literally slaughtering Jews. Like, yeah. you know, we have to kill them. And there's yeah. one person right. doing it. I right. mean, there's one person at the core. There's, it's, uh, yeah, that's fascinating. And it's, it's short, and there's a clear aggression. It 